Um, from the get-go, we wanted to have the most realistic possible simulation. And every time we, we sort of did an assessment of where we were, we said, OK, what is missing? Why is it not perfect? What do we need to improve? And every time we added a new system. Mm -hmm. That's why we are now at four different uh, systems. Uh, one thing I didn't even talk about during the presentation, uh, on 2024, we have developed a new process for uh, aircraft realism. So we now have uh, instruments. You know, for example, we put uh, uh, we have accelerometers, accelerometers, uh, 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 machines that measure forces. We put on the yokes. Um, we measure airspeed outside, and so we we do uh, we get the planes or rent them or find them and and fly them and do measures, and uh, we have developed a tool set to do the same type of measures in the sim. Uh, that's in the SDK. People can use it for plane makers, third parties. And so we, um, we basically did this with, with our fleet. And uh, so we now have not only pilot feedback, test pilot feedback, manufacturer feedback, we but we have actually measures and data which allow us to say uh, how realistic we are on planes. And so the 2020 fleet, we improved. Um, so maybe some of you have noticed differences in the 2024 aircraft. Uh, because basically we did this and uh, what we found is that 2020 planes were actually not that bad but there was a, a kind of a, a few flaws you know so we have a we even have a scoring system where 2020 planes would have 80 percent 70 percent sometimes 85 but there was always a little bit of a, a one step more to do and so we did this we improved we did measures we went back we flew again we until it was better and now the 2024 aircraft will be 95 percent 98 percent so can you go to 100? So what we found is um, that's difficult because maybe the accuracy of the instruments, even between two flights, there is two or three percent difference between two aircraft. It's not going to be exactly the same. You know, they're all uh, uh, older version, different. So maybe maybe very new. I, I, I'm pretty sure when you see, did you, did you fly the Vision Jet, maybe one of you? No. You did yes. the helicopter? Yes. Oh, yeah. The, yes. But I flew the Vision Jet, uh, I had a chance yesterday. So th these aircraft are so slick, so almost perfect. Maybe these are really like perfect perfect twins, but uh, many of the older like Cessna 172s, they're all a little bit different from each other. But we now get very, very close to reality. So we have this no, new, uh, I would say, maybe scientific approach now. In combination with still pilots, test pilots, so there is a subjective sort of uh, uh, impression, but also now uh, facts and data. And so uh, we can say, and, and you've probably experienced, we're one step closer to, 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 to the real aircraft now. Yeah, th this really came from this uh, scientific approach on measuring. When you do uh, the, the measures on real aircraft, uh, it allows you to measure um, uh, uh, how the aircraft will respond to movements or to, to turbulences, etc. And we, we improved the realism of some some areas where you don't easily get the data. You know, for example, what is the moment of inertia of the aircraft? Uh, what are the, you know, it's, easily to com it's easy to compute drag on an aircraft because you have the engine power, the drag, if you don't accelerate, is the, pretty much the same. But what is the, the drag when the aircraft does this? You know, when you, when you skid or when you, when you go, ooh, yeah. or when there's a bump and it goes, ooh, what is this drag? And with all the instruments we now put on, on the aircraft to do measures, we have, sort of curves, drawings, which we can, uh, uh, which basically are dependent on these factors. And uh, when you do that in the sim, you have the, if it's for example, two times longer, you say, oh, you know, in the, if the real air airplane does like, and, and in the sim it does, it's slower, then something is wrong, yeah. right? And then you go in, you fix it until you have exactly the same behavior. And so I think it's this approach, which made the aircraft more lively. It's just that the, uh, the, these parts, which are much more difficult to get uh, as data or, or, or measures are now realistic because of this process. Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, so the the um, the airspeed, you know, on the on the video I showed when it turns, I think yellow red, it's already around 20 feet per second. So that's pretty that's pretty fast. So if your airplane gets into this, you would uh, you would spin off. So the danger is really if it gets faster than your maximum roll speed, right? That's when 
it yeah. goes left, you go full right, and you remember. still turn, and then most most likely you stall or something, or you you just get get into the ground. So yeah, that's a chance. Uh, this 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 system works on every aircraft you see. So whether it's multiplayer, AI, traffic, and uh, it's because it's a it's actual physics simulation. It's not a, a hard coded effect. Um, it natively works on helicopters, on Chinook, anything that produces a. Uh, a closed distance CFD, you know the green lines. We just copy that into the other, which does the wake surveillance, um, and uh, and we can even uh, do that on. So we also have a system to pretty much um, generate uh, these. For example, a helicopter, which is an AI helicopter, we just generate a, a sort of a donut ring, right? We know the weight of the helicopter, so we know how much air goes down, and then we generate a ring. And someone uh, uh, yesterday actually said, "Hey." Why don't you put that on boats? And I said, good idea. Yeah. So we can put it on anything. I mean, a car wouldn't really be interesting for anyone, but but big, big boats, hey, if you want to come with a helicopter, maybe it's cool to have the little effect. Yeah. So this is really on everything. Uh, and we're thinking of adding also uh, assistance. Uh, what a pilot really wants is just to know if there's danger or not. You don't want to see the little lines or anything. So maybe just a red warning zone or maybe a, a transparent area like smoke or something, you know, to, which goes away when the danger is away. So well, that's something we're thinking of maybe adding uh, as an assistance. Someone just, uh, uh, I think it was yesterday, uh, flew up uh, in the Grand Canyon. Uh -huh. You know, there is a, uh, um, and I was running this morning, right? There was a lot of wind. And when you get really close to the border, you feel the, the hot air coming up. It's like a hair dryer, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and, and, uh, and so I saw someone yesterday who crashed because he, he flew up to the rim, but way too low and slow. Mm -hmm. And when he touched the, the, the plane really went whoop like this. Oh, so this is not a winch. I mean, I don't know if it could, it could be called winch here, but it's the same phenomenon, right? It's a, it's a wind which for a, a moment goes into one direction and then into the other. And uh, this is already uh, simulated with a force system, you know, the at atmospheric uh, draft and, uh, and, and turbulence and winds. Um, it's something we in the future we're thinking of improving. So the next step is to put a, a computational fluid dynamics onto the whole atmosphere around the plane. So we have a prototype of that. Um, currently, we still we already have you know a field is hot, it goes up. This is all simulated. What we don't have is uh, if we added uh, this simulation, we would have like two fields would merge together, and it would actually naturally go up and back down and stuff like this. This would even create more shear. We already have some, but the next step really is to add uh, uh, computational fluid dynamics on the whatever 50 kilometers around the aircraft. So that's something we. We're considering it's not going to be for 24 launch, but pretty soon after. You still have, you still have wind shear and, and, uh, and turbulences and I mean a lot of people complain that there's too much. Um, we have a slider to turn it yeah. down, you know. Um, the live weather has a, a lot more now because the clouds and the, the weather we get from the live weather service is, is decoded in a better way. And the turbulences are, are a lot more strong, I mean stronger on, on days where they're stronger. Like today, uh, I've seen there's like 38 mile per hour gusts today on the runway, so... For this we will proceed like we did on 2020, mm -hmm. get feedback, what people would like to have. It's already a huge, uh, I mean, you can start the career anywhere and you can stay there for uh, ever because there's always new missions. Uh, you, can, you can only fly helicopter, you can only fly airliner, so you don't even have to do anything you really don't like to do and you still have enough missions. So um, there's a lot of content, but I, I expect we will get uh, good feedback and, uh, and go from there and maybe add, uh, if people want more content, more, more modes, more types of, of, of activities, probably we'll add that, yeah. I know a lot of people were asking for historical weather. Mm -hmm. We now have 24 hours. Oh, I had suggested that one. <coughs> you know, it's okay. it's so it's not it's not it's not back to 1900. Uh, but the most important thing is, if you only fly in the evening, you sometimes would like to test the afternoon, or if you missed a, a weather event on TV and you can go back, or maybe also um, I want to train this afternoon at three, uh, once, twice, three. I can always go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. And you in the sim, uh -huh. you can now do live weather, 
everything live, and then you can change the time. And it stays live because it does live from five hours ago.